Mighty Mr. Morsky here. Welcome back to the channel, and we're he? taking a little that foul side step, I guess, from, uh, he was here. from Zombie Chronicles. Now he's gone? And uh, you know, we, we, what he has done. we've Mark done the uh, we've done the three World at War maps from uh, from Zombie Chronicles. It only feels fair to do uh, to do the giant. So that's what we're doing. We're doing. The giant, or as we originally knew it, Dear Reese. And I haven't played this map for quite some time, actually. Because I hadn't played Black Ops 3 for some time. But as soon as uh, Zombie Chronicles was announced, I just went straight on to Revelations. If I got down there, I would have been so ticked off. Oh, fantastic. <laughs> um, but, you know, you know, as I said, I, I just thought we'd do all the World at War maps. I know we're not going to be able to do all the Black Ops 1 maps, uh, because they're not all available on Black Ops 3 and the same for Black Ops 2. Uh, but, you know, it, it just, if it's there, we might as well give it a go. See how well we do. I can do quite good on, uh, on the Giant. hate it when that happens. It's like I aim at them, go to knife, and it doesn't connect. I, I hate it when that happens. Oh boy. Uh, that's not good. You are dead. My grenade gun skills are as brilliant Killing as my accuracy. Oh, thank you. I needed that. <laughs> I must find way to survive this nightmare. I suppose what, what's great about doing these videos, aside from the fact that I can actually do them, you know, I don't need any extra cables or a capture card or anything like that. Uh, but what's so great about it is uh, I can, I can just, you know, I can talk to you, talk to my people. Hello, zombie, right there. Jesus. Are you are you actually kidding me? Thank you. Oh boy. Um, but I've actually got something I do want to talk about. See, I'm part of a part of a group on Facebook, a very uh, geek-oriented one. So, any kind of film, TV series, uh, comic, uh, yeah, and anything like that. Uh, it's it's a perfect place to talk about that, uh, to talk about like talk about it with like-minded people, and it's certainly better than one group I was part of, which the people on there were just complete idiots. Uh, but I'll get to that in a sec. Um, but on this group, a point was put across about uh, cosplaying. Now, as as you know, uh, if you've been following me on uh, on YouTube, if you're subscribed to me. Uh, if you know me in person, uh, you know that I'm a cosplayer. I love dressing up as uh, as various characters. You know, I, I mean, I primarily do Spider-Man, uh, but I have done Joker. I've done Punisher. Um, I'm thinking of for a laugh at uh, Optimus Bristol Comic Con um, in June in a couple of weeks of doing uh, a very skinny. <laughs> Uh, John McClane from Die Hard because you know, I've, I've got the stuff already. You know, I've basically I've, I've got some uh, sweatpants, uh, you know, like uh, jogging bottoms kind of thing. Uh, I've got a vest. Um, if I can get my hands on some fake blood off a friend, uh, I, can, I can do that. I've got a couple of props as well. But the funny thing is, it's actually the props I want to talk about. I hope that's in the right spot. That's it, drop down. I'm going this way. GMP. There we go. Um, but yeah, it's the props that I want to talk about. There have been a couple of events that have taken place that have really changed a few things. Um, obviously, on Monday, 
we had the unfortunate uh, terrorist attack in uh, in Manchester, in which 22 people were killed. Um, and then I think the other day, the other day there was an incident. A man went to a Comic Con, I think in Phoenix. I'm not, I can't quite remember. Uh, but he went, and he went with the intention of killing uh, Jason David Frank, the the original Green Ranger from uh, Mighty Morphin Power Rangers. He went in with live guns and knives to kill this guy. And uh, fortunately he was stopped. He didn't hurt anyone, he didn't kill anyone. He was stopped. But these two events have put into question uh, the use of props at, uh, at Comic-Cons. You know, and the argument I've put across, because a lot of people are saying, oh, they should be banned. We should ban props, you know, because, you know, we, you, because it's, it's for safety. I'm sorry, but it's, it's banning them straight up is not really, like, I don't know how to, how to put it, but it's too precautionary, you know. I mean, sure. There's nothing wrong with being safe. You know, I'd, I'd rather, I'd like going to these events, and I want to feel safe. And generally speaking, I do feel safe. Um, but it has put into question all that. Now, my argument to it is, no, don't, don't ban them. You know, because some characters that people cosplay as have a signature prop. And to take that away, to ban them from using that, it kind of takes an element of fun out of cosplaying. I mean, sure, a safety, uh, being safe kind of outweighs um, having fun. I accept that. But, you know, like Hawkeye and, and Green Arrow, they've had like resurgences in popularity, you know, because of Avengers and the Marvel Cinematic Universe, more people are dressing up as Hawkeye. Um, and also his uh, his new recent comics. You know, he's become more popular, so more people are cosplaying as him. Um, and Green Arrow, obviously, he's become more popular because of Arrow. Mm. This is flavor unlike any and uh, uh, Deadpool has his signature props. Sure, they may look dangerous. Um... And uh, like, also, if, if, if anyone cosplays as uh, one of the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, the turtles' weapons are as much a part of that character. You know. Um, and, uh, you know, the, the costume would feel incomplete without these props. Now, to ban them, as I said, it would take an element of fun out of cosplaying. Because after all, the, the second half of cosplay is play. You go and have fun. Um, you know, it, it, it doesn't matter how old you are. You can go to these. You can have fun. You can pretend to be these characters. You can have interactions that you've only dreamt of. You know, like I've dreamt of... Uh, Punisher meeting the Predator. How would that go out? In fact, I've made made that suggestion to Superpower Beatdown uh, to Bat in the Sun multiple times. It's a face-off that isn't so one-sided. You know, because either one of them could win. Um, and because I cosplay Punisher um, on occasion, there will come a point where I'll I'll be cosplaying Punisher at a Comic Con, and I'll meet a Predator cosplayer, and I'll be able to kind of live this out, and also kind of discuss it. Because unlike most of what Bat in the Sun does, there's no Bat character in there, so it's not one-sided. 
Uh, but I'm kind of getting off on a bit of a tangent there. Um, so, yeah, I mean, banning props. Yes, it's being safe. But it's also, like, as I said, it, it takes an element of fun out. Now, every, nearly every Comic-Con I've been to, I've been checked. If I've had a prop with me, I've been checked. Um, they make sure that it's fake, that it won't do any damage. I mean, anything can become a, a lethal, an offensive weapon. Um, you know, it depends on what it is, in a way. Uh, but that's, that's not the point. Um, but, you know, I've had every prop that I've had with me checked. When I've cosplayed Punisher, they've checked my weapon. I mean, yeah, at a glance, the weapons I use for Punisher, they're obviously fake. Because I keep the orange tips. Because that's something that they always say. They stress it. They can't stress it enough. If you're going to have a prop gun, make sure it has an orange tip. Or is painted a bright colour. So that it's not ob so that it's obvious it's not real and by law in the UK I think I think it actually applies to the rest of the world as well but for airsoft guns they legally have to paint a percentage of it a bright color depending on the age of the person buying it you know so if you're of a certain age then legally they have to paint a percentage of that gun a bright colour. Doesn't matter what colour it is, it has to be legally painted that colour. So that everyone can see, you know, this is fake. It's, it's not real. It, it, won't, it won't harm you. Um, otherwise, you keep an orange tip on the end of your prop gun. That way, when you have it out, people won't instantly think, oh my god, he's got a real gun. You know. Um, something just popped up on my laptop. Thank you. As soon as I grab it, it disappears. It knows how pissed off I can get. <laughs> um... So yeah, I always make sure, if I'm going to be a character that has a gun, I keep the barrel, I keep the barrel tip orange, so that that way they know it's fake, or I make it as obvious as I can that it's fake. Like, if they've said, you know, can you, can you prove it's not real, um, especially if it's like one that, you know, one of the lights and sounds. Uh, guns that I have. Um, you know, I've, I've pulled the trigger and shown that it makes lights and sounds. It doesn't fire a projectile or anything like that. And, uh, yeah, pretty much. <laughs> um, but that's what I'm talking about. You know, I mean, I even got stopped and checked when I was kick ass for. MCM Birmingham last November um, and of course those things could be offensive weapons you know they're they're plastic they're not so much hard plastic but they're not flimsy plastic either you know it took quite a bit of cutting with a quite a strong um, scalpel to cut it in half because it was a cane it was a regular cane from a Halloween shop that, uh, that I cut in half in order to turn into batons and uh, you know even they got checked and I I didn't mind it you know I thought you know th you know th 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 they're just there on my wrist but then I realized oh yeah they're doing it uh, for protection okay and uh, yeah I was more than happy for them to look at it and they were like yep they're fine you can go on in and enjoy your day um, so it's not a case of, you know, they target specific prop guns.
Oh, sorry, I got <laughs> getting a bit focused there. Um, so yeah, I don't mind security checks. I mean, every time I go to Florida, every time I go into one of these uh, theme parks, uh, you know, the Disney parks, uh, SeaWorld, yes, I go to SeaWorld. I'm not brainwashed by uh, by Blackfish, which is, I, I swear to you now, it's absolute BS. And, and Peter is BS, basically. Um, but that's that's another story. Uh, but every theme park I go to, they have the security checks, and they look through the bags, and they make sure that there's nothing harmful in there before they let you in. I don't mind that. I've got nothing to hide. You know. I have absolutely nothing to hide in my bags, so I don't mind... I don't mind getting them searched. Why would I? You know. And it's the same at airports. You know, I don't mind it. I really do not mind having my stuff looked through to make sure that I'm safe and that everyone else is safe. I really don't mind that. Because at the end of the day, it comes back to the old adage of, uh, of, rather, of being safe than sorry. It always comes back to that. And let's put it this way. That is actually pretty accurate. I would rather be safe than sorry. I'd rather go through countless checks to make sure I've got nothing harmful, nothing dangerous on me. Even though, as I said, I've got nothing to hide. I've got nothing that's, I, that I would willingly bring that's dangerous um, with me. I've got nothing to hide or anything like that. I don't mind them going through a suitcase and pulling out, you know, a pair of underwear, which, you know, people get embarrassed about. It's like, oh god, they're showing off my underwear to the world, I don't like this. Um, you know, I really do not mind that. We all get embarrassed every so often, and besides, I dress up in a skin-tight red and blue costume that I've made, so I've got no reason to be embarrassed. Um, I'd rather go through all that than have no security check, and then a terrorist to detonate a homemade bomb. You know, that that's the truth of it. Safe, rather be safe than sorry. Always, always comes back to that. But at the same time, it shouldn't take away from the fun factor. You know, we go to, we do these things to have fun. We go on the holiday, we go through the airport to go on holiday and have fun. We go to Comic Con with these props, pretending to be characters that we like, to have fun. And yeah, we want to be safe, but we want to have fun at the same time. We want to live out these fantasies of, you know, Spider Man meeting uh, a character from something else that we like. You know. So that's what I'm saying, you know, we we shouldn't ban props altogether. No way. What we should do is have maybe stricter kind of security checks, you know. I mean, a lot of people, one guy on that group, when I put my point across, he said, oh, you're expecting them to check a half a million people's props before they go into a Comic-Con. Um, and, you know which is impossible and it was like well no it's it's not impossible um but he was also saying that you know you expect them to do that and keep the line moving and it's like well yeah you know no one likes waiting too long i get that but if it's for a matter of safety it's necessary so you know if it takes half an hour for you to get in so what? And I'm so in focus that I'm not actually ticked off that I got downed. Because now these, these guys are going to be dead meat. Uh, where was my train of thought? I forgot. 
forgotten where I was going with this. Um, I think I need little revive after drinking that. Yeah, I've really forgotten. Um, oh well. I, feel my body I think I was saying, you know, oh yeah, the tightest security, yeah. If you're at the front of the line, it takes you half an hour to check your weapons, kind of thing, and check your props um, in order to get in. I really do not mind that. Faster reload means faster you know, even if it's something beats. as innocent looking as a pair of batons, you know, for kick-ass. I need them as part of the character, but at the same time, I want to be safe. So, yeah. Look away, check and check away. You know, they're not dangerous. There's nothing hidden in them. I mean, yeah, sure, they're dangerous. If 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 someone ticked me off, yeah, I could smack them with them. Um, but they wouldn't kill. You know. Um, but yeah, if I mean, it, it depends on who you get at these theme parks. Because sometimes you get the people that are very thorough, that take their job seriously. Uh, but then you get the ones that are just like, oh, whatever, you know, let's keep the line moving. Um, but let's face it, if theme parks as big as Disney, which allow hundreds of thousands of people every day of the year, as opposed to a Comic-Con that accepts maybe half a million people over the course of two days, you know, if, if a theme park can do that, then a Comic-Con can as well. You know, it's no excuse. So, yeah. Do I expect... Do I expect Comic-Cons to check half a million... Half a million props? And keep the line moving? Well, yeah, I do. Because I know they can. Um, so to basically kind of summarize this long-winded story uh, discussion, yeah, don't don't ban props altogether. You know, don't take that element of fun out of cosplay. By all means, be safe. You know, check check the weapons, but don't ban them. You know, because as I said. Some characters need these props. Can you imagine someone cosplaying Thor and not having Mjolnir? Or someone cosplaying Captain America and not having the shield? Someone cosplaying one of the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles and not having their signature weapons. Leonardo without his katanas. Donatello without his bow staff. Uh, Michelangelo without his nunchucks. Raphael without his side. Can, can you imagine those Comic Cons? They would be boring. The people wouldn't have fun. Not just the ones who are dressed as the character, but the people who love the characters that want to have pictures with them and want them to do like a character pose. They won't have fun. So that's the point I'm making. You know, keep the element of fun, but at the same time, keep people safe. And so, as I said, don't ban props altogether, but certainly, like, be thorough. Check every weapon. You know, if, like, say, you go in with a prop sword and it's made of metal, confiscate it. You know, and say, you know, I'm sorry, you can't bring that into the Comic-Con. Leave it here, and you can pick it up at the end of the day. By all means. I know some people won't like that, but safety over everything, you know. Um, which I know some people will say, oh, you sound a bit hypocritical. Well, no, I'm not. I'm taking what people are saying and I'm adapting it to what I'm saying, to the point I'm putting across. Um, so yeah, if someone comes in with a sword that's made of metal, even if it's a blunt sword, you know, a blunt metal sword can still do damage, you know. You can still cut yourself on blunt scissors. You can still cut yourself on a blunt knife. You know, just because it's blunt, 
doesn't mean it's less dangerous. However, if someone comes in with a foam or a rubber sword, that yeah, that, that's not going to do any damage. Sure, if you try and stab someone with a, a rubber sword, it's going to leave like a little dent. You know, but um, but if they got a foam or a rubber sword or anything like that, something that if you do accidentally get hit by it, yeah, you'll you'll be taken aback. Oh my god, I've just been smacked by a by a sword. But you're not going to be permanently damaged by it. You're not going to lose an arm. You're not going to lose a leg or lose an eye. I mean, you might get blinded by it if you accidentally get poked in the eye. Um, but you're not going to lose that eye. As in, it's not going to be, like, hanging out of your skull. I know that's a bit grim, but, you know, that, that's, that's the point I'm putting across. You're not going to be permanently damaged by a foam or a rubber sword. Um, and the, it kind of goes the same with, uh, with guns. Make it obvious that they're not real. If you're going to have a realistic looking gun, like an airsoft gun, or a resin one that you've made, make it obvious that it's fake. You know, either make it so that there's no opening in the barrel, that the magazine cannot be removed. Paint the tip orange, you know, paint half the gun bright orange, or, you know, just do anything to prove that it's fake. That way, it won't get confiscated. If you do get one that looks real, then yeah, that's going to get confiscated. You know, it does also at the same time come down to a judgment call. You know, if something looks too realistic, yeah, confiscate it. You know, they can't bring it in. But at the same time, a lot of people are kind of acting like others are complete idiots. Some are. I will admit there are some people who are complete idiots. But a lot of people aren't. They can tell a fake gun from a real one. They can tell a fake sword from a real one. You know, you gotta give people credit. You know, it's the same with kids. You know, some people don't give kids credit. They can be intelligent. Kids can be smart. I know I say a lot of kids can be dumb, but a lot of them can be really smart. So yeah, and once again, to summarize, don't ban props for Comic Cons, just put more guidelines, put more thorough checks on them. You know, don't take that element of fun out of cosplay. A lot of people do it um, because they've been picked on and they just want some escapism. They want to live out a fantasy. They don't want it taken away from them, but at the same time, they want to stay safe. So yeah, don't ban props, just put stricter guidelines maybe on them and more checks, you know. And if it looks real, if it looks like it can do some damage, then by all means, confiscate it. You know, and don't take it in. But at the same time, also make it a judgment call yourself. If you think your prop looks too realistic, don't take it. Take something that looks less realistic and save a realistic one for something else. You know, like if you're doing a photo shoot, Use the realistic looking prop. If you're going to a Comic Con or a public event or anything like that, then use one that looks looks like use an alternative that looks fake. You know, you're the one that needs to make the judgment call as much as uh, the people who are in charge of the Comic Con, the one that's, you know, the security, the organizers. You know, you gotta work with them. I, so close to such I mean, yeah, you you will get some people who kind of try and go around the rules. But those people are fools. Let's face it. So anyway, that's that discussion kind of out of the way. <coughs> Sorry. 
So yeah, I hope you I hope you found that a bit informative and hopefully you agree with it. I mean I'll probably bring it back up on the uh, at the end of the video. I think I'm well on the way to maxing out the uh, the faro here. Kind of thinking back to something I have said already. I know I touched upon uh, touched upon uh, Peter earlier. I suppose that's kind of a good thing to talk about. Just how biased and BS Peter are, because they are. Um. So yeah, let's uh, let's talk about that. You know, a lot of people think I'm a fool for supporting SeaWorld still. Um, you know, because of Blackfish, oh, it's revealed they're evil, they mistreat their animals, blah, blah, blah. Well, no, they don't. SeaWorld actually do a lot more for the animals than Peter ever do. You know, SeaWorld will work to try and save animals. What what do Peter do? Peter do nothing. You know, the money that SeaWorld spend on saving animals, Peter spends on trying to show how evil SeaWorld are. And they're not doing a good job of it. Because what they're actually doing is they're spreading lies. You know, Peter are more the bad guys than SeaWorld. You know, their idea of saving healthy animals is to kill them. No joke. Uh oh. <laughs> You know, I've, I've been to SeaWorld countless times. I know the good they do. I suppose, you know, to kind of get out of that, and something else that I touched upon was uh, a group that I was part of where the members were just complete idiots. And it was a, a Marvel Cinematic Universe fan page, a fan group. And before any of you say, oh yeah, they're idiots because they're Marvel fans. No, it wasn't that. What it was, uh, a lot of these people, I'd have to say like 90, 90% of the, uh, of the people in that group had never picked up a comic in their life. And were asking questions about things that actually get explained in the movies. You know, well, why does why does this character do this? It's explained why they do it, and it it just oh, they were such idiots. And it was also the admins were morons as well. Um, what it was, they would. Because it was a group where obviously your post needs to get approved. You can't just post willy-nilly. It stops spam, I understand. But, like, they were rejecting posts that actually had value. And accepting posts that were just complete crap. So, I mean, I'm, I'm amazed how long I lasted on that page. On that group, but yeah, they were such idiots. You know, I mean, one person said, um, like, why does, why does Captain America give Nick Fury a $10 bill? Or, 
I mean, th this person, if I remember it, they were saying, why does Captain America give him, give Nick Fury a $5 bill when he's on the helicarrier in the first Avengers film? And it's like, it's explained earlier in the film why he gives him that. And it's a bet that they had, you know. When Cap's in the, in the gym, he says, at this point, I doubt anything would surprise me. Nick Fury goes, 10 bucks, says you're wrong. And then later on in the film, when he's on the helicarrier command deck, sure enough, he gives Nick Fury a ten dollar bill. Because that's the bet, you know. It's also a little bit of humour. And I know Cinema Sins picked up on it, but Cinema Sins are full of crap. You know, I can't remember what they said exactly, but they said some kind of BS about it. And I think I commented on there on my last channel on uh, on the Delta 016 and I said it's that it's called humor you would know what this was if you were actually funny or they were saying some or I said something like um, it's called being funny something you wouldn't know anything about because I don't find cinema sims funny you know yeah that they didn't they do it for do it for humor, but they're not actually that funny. You know, on on at least two occasions, I've watched through one of their videos, and I've actually unsinned a lot of their sins. So I'm thinking I might even try and do my own video, Cinema Unsinned. You know, where I, I go through Cinema Sins videos, and I basically unsin what they put on. So if they've added a sin for a, a scene that actually gets explained, I will unsin it. You know, that's that's how it would work. So for example, yeah they they question the uh, the ten dollars thing from Avengers Assemble. That's what it's called here in the UK. They sinned that because it wasn't necessary. It technically was. It's not like the biggest, it's not like the most important point in the film. No. But it's important because it was mentioned earlier. And yeah, we got, we got Monkey Ball. Alright, let's get that. You know, so and so scenes like that, yeah, maybe I should maybe I should do that. Like um, like Mighty Mr. Morsky presents Cinema Unsinned. Go through all the Cinema Sins videos and unsin them. Hell, I've actually defended uh, the DCEU films that they've done. Some of the points they've brought up, I've actually defended. I've actually unsinned. So that says something, you know. This is the guy that, you know, is not a huge fan of the DCEU. It thinks that, you know, they're not doing the best job. The DCEU could be and should be a lot better than it actually is, without a doubt. And I was defending the likes of Batman vs Superman. So that says something. Yeah, maybe, maybe I will. Maybe I will. I'll, uh, I'll think about it. If I can think of a way of doing it, I will. Probably won't survive this long. I can survive for literally hours on this. On this map. The same as with not. And it's only playing this game. It's certainly it's brought something to my mind. It's something that actually makes me laugh quite a bit um, when I see these, you know, uh, these YouTubers do a list of the top ten or the top five uh, Call of Duty Zombies maps, and they put a map like Mob of the Dead ahead of Dear Reese. 
I just I disagree with them. I'm I'm going down. <laughs> because you know a lot of people like Mob of the Dead, and I I you know everyone has their opinions, but come on, Mob of the Dead over Dear Reese? No, Dear Reese is a so much better map. That made no sense. <laughs> Dear Reese is a far more superior map. Dear Reese is amazing. Dear Reese is a brilliant map. It's one that I go back and I play more than any other map. Now I think I've maxed out the, uh, the Weevil. And so we'll pack a punch this, and uh, we'll see how much further we can get. Ah, the hell with this it. <laughs> very good choice for Nikolai. Ow. Not built to move so fast. But yeah, no. As I, as I was saying, putting Mob of the Dead ahead of Dear Reese, that's a no-no to me. Mob of the Dead, I didn't like Mob of the Dead that much. I mean, I still play it, but I didn't think Mob of the Dead was that good. I didn't, I wasn't a fan of the afterlife mode. I preferred having Quick Revive. Because then, you know, with, with what Mob of the Dead had with afterlife mode, yeah, you had the, the ability to shoot lightning out of your hands, but it didn't kill them, it, it just moved them. And sometimes it wouldn't even move them too far away. So they would end up coming back and attacking you and could potentially down you. I didn't like it. So when people say maps like Mob of the Dead are better than Dear Reese, I wholeheartedly disagree. And I've also, I'm also in that boat with uh, why Mob of the Dead wasn't included with Zombie Chronicles. I didn't like it. I didn't think it was a good map. And it also, I don't think it was that important to the, uh, to the story of zombies. But that's just me, you know. I'm not, I'm certainly not upset that Mob of the Dead wasn't included. I mean, yeah, I've said I want to cosplay one of the characters from Mob of the Dead, because they're quite easy to do. I've already got the perk colas made. I got the bottles made, so I've got the label stuck on and all that. Yeah, I'd definitely say, when, you know, in my top five, at least, Dear Reese is number one. Origins is also in that top five, so is Nutcut and Horton. Uh, Kino Bear Horton. Um, I also kind of, I prefer Die Rise. I do prefer Die Rise over Mob of the Dead. I mean, the, the mood of Mob of the Dead was actually really cool. You know, it was spooky, it was dark, it was grim, grimy, and, you know, it, it was good. I liked that atmosphere. As I said, as I said though, I didn't like Afterlife mode, I did not like Brutus. You know, but at the same time I don't like the Panzer Soldat either. The only time I have any hope against the Panzer Soldat is uh, with the Raygun Mark II. Which I'd forgotten just how much that weapon melted the Panzer Soldat until I played it yesterday. I played Origins on Zombie Chronicles yesterday. And yeah, it melted the Panzer Soldat.
So many explosions. <laughs> Oh, that's feeling so weird. I'm resting my controller on, like, my abdomen while I'm playing this. <laughs> it's sending weird vibrations right through. <laughs> I suppose that does kind of beg the question. With me saying about my top five uh, zombies map, it does beg the question... Uh, like how I would rank them. Obviously, uh, Dear Reese would be number one. Uh, well, Dear Reese slash the giant. Um, that would come in at number one. Uh, number two, what would my second favourite be? Uh, second favourite, it's probably going to be Nutgut and Thornton. Because, you know, it's such a classic map. It's nice and simple. Um, it's confined, but it's not cramped. Like, say, Virut or Zetsubo Noshima, you know. Uh, number three, number three B. Uh, number three, I'd say, would be Kino Del Torton. Number four would be Origins, and number five would be uh, Dai Rise. That's how I would rank them. Uh, in terms of my least favorites, least favorite zombie map. Um, well, Zetsubo Noshima would be on there. That map, I, it was too cramped. And I didn't like what you had to do to get the power on. You know, you had to collect certain water. You know, um, and while it was easy to kill, the, uh, that, what type of zombie? Uh, what was it, the, the Lasher or something? I, 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 can, I can't remember what it was called. Uh, the one where it had the orange spores that you had to shoot off in order to kill. Um, you know, I didn't like that. The spiders, despite the fact I'm a, a Spider-Man cosplayer, I did not like the spiders. Um, the plants, the overall plant spore thing, uh, collecting the spores, watering them, I didn't like that. Uh, the web. All the, all the web stuff, you know, if uh, if something's covered in webs, or if the pathway is blocked off by webs, uh, you then have to destroy that. I didn't, I didn't like that. Um, what else would I get? Uh, what are the maps would I put on there? As my, as my least favorite, uh, Shangri-La. Again, it, it's just, it's cramped. The muds, uh, the napalm, and the shrieker zombies, the, the the monkeys. Oh my god, the monkeys! <laughs> you know, the, the monkeys in uh, in Ascension, I can deal with them. But the monkeys in Shangri-La, you know, those, you know, stealing my drops. How very dare they! <laughs> um. Yeah, that, that, that's that's how it is. Uh, Call of the Dead is also on there. I didn't like Call of the Dead that much. Uh, George Romero gets around. Jesus. You know, you think you've left him way, way behind. And you think you've got enough time to do something. And then he's suddenly there. You know, it, it's literally one of those moments where you just scream, Help! Plus, every time I've played that map, all the players that I've, like, been in a match with only care about the Easter egg. So if I'm downed and there's no zombies around me, they just leave me. And it's like, well, hang on. I'm right here. You know, teammate, down. There's no zombies around. You can help me. Um, well, it's five. Oh, God. Five. I hate five. If ever a friend says, "Oh, do you want to do you want to go on uh, zombies?" Yeah, sure. Uh, shall we go on five? No, definitely not. That is super cramped. And the Pentagon thief. I hate the Pentagon thief. And uh, oh, where do you get the power on? Where the power switch is located? That is super cramped and amazing. You know, I don't even know where the hell I'm going or what I'm doing. You 
you know, I really, I just really do not like that map. Um, but on the flip side of that, you know, the exception to that with the, you know, oh, the maps are cramped. Well, I did kind of like Nuketown Zombies. It's not in my top five, don't get me wrong. Uh, but it's, it's a good map, I like it. Um, it's just some maps, it's a little bit too cramped. Um, what was that? Zetsubo Nushima. Zetsubo Nushima, five. Um, I forgot what the other maps were. Uh, buried. I didn't like Buried that much. Mother of the Dead, you know I don't like too much either. Uh, Shangri-La, that was, that was one of the other ones. Uh, I can't think of, like, my fifth one. I wasn't a huge fan of Moon, actually. Now that I think about it, I wasn't a huge fan of Moon when I played that. You know, the Zero-G, while it was a good mechanic, it was actually kind of cool in some places. It was super irritating in others, and it ended up getting me killed quite a few times. I mean, yeah, on occasion I'll go back and I'll play Moon, but it's not... It's not in my top five, as you know. It's in my top five worst, or least favorite. With that being said, I have played nearly all the maps. In fact, I think it's fair to say I've played all of them. Every World at War map, every Black Ops, every Black Ops 2, every Black Ops 3. Yeah, I've, I've played them all. <laughs> but to vary in success, you know, I can be great at some maps. I'm fantastic at Nuts and Dorton, uh, Deris, Kino Del Dorton. Die Rise, I'm good at. Um, uh, what else? Uh, Origins, I'm pretty decent at Origins. Nuketown Zombies, I'm pretty decent. Well, this is getting mad. Oh yeah, I should have put Shadows of Evil on my uh, top 5 least favourite. I didn't like Shadows of Evil that much. I mean, when I first played it, yeah, it's great. Oh, this, you know, new mechanics for Black Ops 3. This is really good. Uh, but then after other playthroughs, you know, and, you know, the, the killer meatballs, as I call them, uh, those bugs, the magua, uh, getting the pack of punch open. Uh, I've never got the Apothecan Servant when I've played Shadows of Evil, which isn't fair, but I've managed to get it on Revelations. Um, and I also just don't like the map because I have never played as Jeff Goldblum. The one character I wanted to play as more than any on that map was Jeff Goldblum. And I never got the chance to play as him. Every single time I went on solo, I got one of the other three characters. Every time I went online and played with others, I was never Jeff Goldblum. I didn't like it because I never got to play as Jeff Goldblum. You know, it wasn't very fair to me. <laughs> you know, it's like, oh, let me play as him for God's sake. I mean, it's the same with Infinite Warfare Zombies. I haven't been able to play as uh, freaking Seth Green's character. And I want to play as Seth Green. Because I like Seth Green. I think he's really funny. Uh-oh. Fetch the monkey. Uh oh. Dog. And they're not affected. Oh. 
Oh no. Oh no, my darling. Fetch the monkey. Bye bye. I only wish you could buy us more time. And fry zombies. <laughs> you know, thinking about it, you know, um, those of you who know kind of like the lore of uh, Call of Duty Zombies should know that originally they were going to go to Paris with zombies like they were going to set a map in paris that i actually would have really liked to see that you know fighting zombies on the eiffel tower would have been actually quite interesting uh gameplay wise you know because you got the verticality and yeah they put some verticality in uh in like die rise and i really liked that and the same with origins they put verticality in that uh they put some verticality in gord crovey again i really liked that Ward Crowley is actually quite a good map. Cramped, but not too cramped, if that makes sense. I do not think throwing gun at them will be as effective as I'm out of monkey bombs, so if I go down here, we'll end the video, because this has been going on for quite some time. I'm at round 34. I have gotten further. I will say that. thinking where else would I want to go for zombies I love a desert theme kind of zombies map go in the desert and fight zombies that would actually be kind of cool ah I knew we weren't going to make it much further <laughs> yeah but we did good we did good round 34 we got 1270 kills my god 409 of them were headshots pretty damn good if I say so myself uh, so this is a good place to end that video and I hope you enjoyed the kind of discussion that I, discussions I've had here uh, raise some valid points that maybe you could consider never know um, but if you enjoyed this video be sure to leave a like rating add it to your favorites if you want to um, leave in the comments down below anything from the previous videos that I've mentioned uh, and something that I've mentioned in this video you know what do you think on the ban for props at Comic Cons? Um, should they, or should they just be checking them? Um, what else? Uh, just anything I've gone over uh, in this video, leave that down in the comments below. If you want to see more videos like this, then hit that subscribe button. You know, we'll get more content, uh, more gameplay, more Comic Con. Uh, because I've got, Bur I got Bristol Optimus coming up in June. So I should be doing something for that. Um, I'm thinking of trying to do a video for Birmingham Comics Festival. That was out a month ago. Um, yeah, I'll figure that out. Uh, but if you want to see more videos like this. Then hit that subscribe button. Until the next video. I've been Mighty Mr. Morsky. Y'all have a nice day. <laughs>